We flew hugging the tree line towards a war that's been hidden from view. The army are taking us towards the no-fire zone, scene of the world's biggest hostage crisis. On the rough road there, you can see what the brutal end of a 25-year war has done to northern Sri Lanka. Absolute devastation. We drove for 40 minutes and barely saw one house left standing, only a handful of civilians among the many soldiers. We don't know whether this was done by the Tamil Tigers when they retreated or the army as it advanced, but no one lives here in this Tamil area or will do for some time. They're either long gone or, like these, they're still fleeing. I stayed in the bunker for the past month and for the last two days I didn't get out of it once. The army wanted to see them getting food and hear of their pain. I came here with my brother, but he died on the way. And these are the ones they sped past, squatting by the side of the road, living on or under leaves, emaciated, fallen. But this is the prize, what the army really wanted us to see. The no-fire zone is just across this lagoon, and they say they now control all but 10 square kilometres of it. This long strip of sand, the fences behind me were, the Sri Lankan army say, breached on Monday. And this is very much a tour for the media of what they say is their victory. But further down this road and further down the no-fire zone, there are still thousands of civilians. The army don't know exactly how many trapped in this continuing standoff. The UN says about 50,000 are there and the fighting must stop. The army says it's well under 20,000 and only fighting can set them free. There is no way that you can avoid civilian casualties in finishing this off, is there surely? You must accept there will be a civilian cost in the final stages of this. I don't say there are no civilian casualties, there can be civilian casualties, but then we are trying all possible avenues to minimise civilian casualties. That's how we have conducted. But a UN document seen by diplomats has put the death toll among civilians since January at 6,500 well above government estimates. And here, strewn across the sand, are the remnants of the thousands the army says fled earlier in the week. But only now they're long gone are we let near the family memorabilia, the clothes they abandoned as they ran for their lives. But the standoff's not finished yet. We heard a total of six distant thuds, explosions. In the past week, the army's been accused of shelling the no-fire zone, but says the only shells being fired now are by the few remaining Tamil Tiger gunmen. So that could be the Tigers firing towards? Maybe. The morning they were firing. it sounded like artillery, didn't it? Let's be honest. No, but uh, this was uh, basically, I was told between one and two, we will be doing uh, some uh, explosions on the mines captured. And as they fly us out just two hours later, International concern was still building that Sri Lanka is not doing enough to protect civilian life. And it's clear the world will not be let in to freely watch the final and doubtless bloody stages of this war. Nick Peyton Walsh, Channel 4 News, Pudumatalan.